Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers and today we are at Rainbow Villa in Grafton Sanctuary Resort, a lovely Spanish designed villa tucked away in a quiet tropical landscape. Now it's the perfect location for a holiday getaway with friends or family vacation. We've got a lot in store for you in the next half hour as we recap the major events in Tobago over the past week. So stay with us for all the details starting with this week's headlines. The country's efforts to boost crisis management kick off in Tobago. Senior citizens say their contributions are critical to society. And later, we take you to the Wildlife Farmers Exhibition. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. What's going on everybody, this is Neo and I'm coming to spend some time with you at the Tobago Jazz Experience 2018. Make sure that you at Pigeon Point Heritage Park Sunday, April 29th. Tobago Jazz is worth the experience. It's Neo, peace and love, I'll see y'all there. Ooh, it's something about, just something about the way she moves. I can't figure it out, it's something about her. Thank you for staying with us. Now, Rainbow Villa was once a part of the colorful Caribbean-style resort, which comprised the Plantation Great House Hotel and a number of charming villas built in 1999. Effective crisis management has become crucial to businesses and governments around the world, and in Trinidad and Tobago, it's no different. Omidara Mills brings details of a crisis management training exercise that's about to be rolled out in this country this month. Here are the details. Tobago's Air and R. Robinson International Airport will be the starting point for the joint security exercise between the governments of Trinidad and Tobago and the United States. The security drill named Exercise Fused Response 2018 is planned for April 16th to the 27th. It will test the security operations of several agencies in the country and help enhance their response to crisis situations. What makes this exercise fairly unique in its nature is the attempt to move from just having the military, arms of, of the Ministry of National Security, the ODPM and TEMA tested, but really test the whole of government approach to crisis management, which will include the National Security Council. It will include other ministries such as finance, foreign affairs, etc. Since 2012, fused response exercises have been funded by the U.S. government. They are done under the U.S. Southern Command in collaboration with the host countries such as Belize and Guyana. Now Trinidad and Tobago accepted the invitation to host this year's security simulation drill since last year. In Tobago, the THA's Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, will play a vital role in this exercise. Our mandate is to ensure that there's coordination amongst all of our emergency support functions. And being part of this exercise would enable us to build capacity in that front. It's just for us to be able to maximize our, our response in terms of ensuring that any gaps are filled within our plans. It's for us to identify what can go wrong and be able to fix it so that in the event that it does, we are able to be prepared. There's the assurance that the security improvement exercise will not disrupt the flight schedule to and from the island. A lot of the, the exercise that requires boots on the ground uh, will take place in Trinidad, but coordinated and launched out of the A.N.R. Robinson in Tobago. So it will really be minimal in terms of footprint and certainly in terms of disruption or any of those other issues. From the exercise, our security and disaster response agencies will be able to improve their procedures when it comes to protecting the lives of residents and visitors to Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Rainbow Villa has four bedrooms, all with their own ensuite bathrooms and are fully air conditioned. The bedroom on the ground floor opens onto the pool deck, while the three bedrooms on the upper floor open onto a large shared balcony. 
Now, people living with autism can have normal lives too. The group Autism Tobago and the health sector teamed up recently to provide greater public awareness about this disorder. Crystal George explains in this next story. For most people living with autism, day-to-day -day life can be challenging. Due to this developmental order, they can find social interaction and communications difficult. Annual World Autism Awareness Day, observed on April 2nd, is a great opportunity to raise both funds and awareness for millions of people across the globe struggling with this disorder. This year's theme is Empowering Women and Girls. In Tobago, the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development partnered with the Autism Tobago to host a tree lighting ceremony at the Botanical Gardens in Scarborough. The event also launched Autism Awareness Month. We here at Autism Tobago join with the global community in celebrating persons with autism and in particular this year, 2018 World Autism Awareness observances will focus on empowering women and girls with autism and involving them and their representatives, their organizations, etc., in policy and decision making to address challenges that women and girls with disabilities may face. Having autism should not be a deterrent from having big dreams and being successful. In fact, with the right support, people with autism can live a fulfilling life. We need social skill groups for children with autism. We need more special educational needs teachers here in Tobago. We need a system for early childhood screening so that autism can be detected at an early age. Dion Imara, featured speaker at the event, says autism training isn't just for educators. She believes professionals who interact with the public should also have this knowledge. Professionals serving in the criminal justice system, like magistrates and judges, need to be aware of a defendant's autism and how this impacts the defendant's behaviour. Police officers need to be receiving training on how to interview a person with autism. We need special training for school teachers so that they can better learn to accommodate an autistic student's needs in the mainstream classroom setting. The Tobago House of Assembly has a critical role in ensuring that Tobago residents living with disabilities are socially included. Our division continues to provide the support and, and more recently we have been meeting with autism being one of the groups so that we could sit and plan such that our response to persons within this autistic group can have the support required. This was the first time a tree lighting ceremony was held in observance of Autism Day celebrations in Tobago. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. The villa has all the important amenities you'll need, including cable TV, a fully furnished kitchen, and a barbecue pit. And if you'd prefer to dine outside, there are also nearby restaurants, such as the Fish Pot and the Seahorse Inn. From the restaurant to the classroom, as early childhood educators are getting a boost that will enhance their ability to support the development of young Tobagonians. We hear more in this next report. A child is never too young to learn language and literacy skills. Actually, research has shown that teaching those skills at the early childhood level can prepare children for success later on in their academic life. So the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy partnered with a group of professional volunteers who promote developmentally appropriate practice for young children throughout the country. Through the Early Childhood Caravan, they hosted a language and literacy workshop for early childhood educators in Tobago. Initially, the view was children under six years of age, no formal reading. At one time, that was the view. All right. Currently, instead of delaying instruction until children get older, 
we need to teach them the skills that they need for reading as well. So we're not saying the other approaches, but, we, but what is the current view is that we need to include where children need to, to have, we diagnose that they have certain skills that they are lacking, we actually teach those children to children. One expert says all children, regardless of their background, must be exposed to a variety of words. This helps them to develop a rich understanding of their meanings and usage. Children we have in our preschools, they come from poor households, some of them, and with limited language and literacy abilities. We have children... Uh, regardless, we have the general mass, regardless of their abilities, we have to cater to their needs as well. And we have children who are gifted, who are exceptionally bright in our midst. Okay, and we have to cater to their needs as well. The educators were also reminded to focus on all of the foundational literacy skills. Do not for one moment or one second doubt your abilities. Own them, they belong to you. Develop them as you are doing now and continue to use them. Research shows that the interactions young children have with literacy materials like books, paper and crayons, as well as adults, are the building blocks for language, reading and writing development. We have to take a break, but coming up next, we'll highlight some pressing issues debated by Tobago's senior citizens. Don't go anywhere. Let's talk Tobago. We'll be right back. What's going on everybody, this is Neo and I'm coming to spend some time with you at the Tobago Jazz Experience 2018. Make sure that you are at Pigeon Point Heritage Park Sunday, April 29th. Tobago Jazz is worth the experience. It's Neo, peace and love. I'll see y'all there. Ooh, it's something about, just something about the way she moves. I can't figure it out, it's something about her. Want it, want it, no get it. And get it, get it, no want it. Make sure you want it, Tara Slyly Live and the Black Side Band in Tobago, heading Space Side, the East, where the music will never cease. It's the Jazz Festival, it's Jazz in the East. And you know the Jazz Festival is worth the wait and it's worth the experience. Free show for the people. Give me a little one. Everybody better sing out to the top of them voice and have a good time. Sing it, sing it. You're a singer. Tobago, see you soon, April 28th. Oh gosh, man. The operations of this villa are managed by Island Investments. The property sits on 7,000 square feet of land and because it's privately owned, it's mostly used as a personal home or for short-term rentals. Now, they may be retired, but the island's senior citizens insist that they can still make important social contributions. In this next story, we see the senior citizens in full debate mode, sharing their thoughts on pertinent issues. Be it resolved that this house recognizes and factors this organization to continue to highlight all citizens, senior citizens' continuous contribution towards this country's development. That's the motion for a special debate at the Tobago House of Assembly. But it's not the elected members in session at the Assembly Chamber. In fact, it's a recent sitting for the island's senior citizens to debate issues affecting them. It's also a chance for the elderly to remind the public and the island's leaders of their key role in Tobago's development. One member believes the newly formed Tobago Association of Elderly Persons can help bridge the gap with the island's youth. Our expectation is that this umbrella body must be so structured to have the best suitable individu individuals de develop the necessary programs to acquire the relevant changes. Square pegs, under no circumstances, must be placed in wrong rooms. The Bacolet Mount St. George district was also well represented. Its representative says there are many issues facing Tobago's seniors that need to be addressed. I'm sure you'd have heard Complaints, off and on. You take them to homes, and the treatment that is meted out to them in these homes, they want to run back to their home. And as you know, I'm sure you would agree that the senior citizens prefer to remain in their home than to be taken to our home. So it's all of this we want 
give um, attention to, pay attention to, and do something in a positive way to ensure that we show love from the cradle to the grave. The minority supported the motion, but one member says attention must be paid to how seniors are treated. She was also assured that the issue will be dealt with. We look at what has been done to some senior citizens, especially in health. Over 60s, they were treated as challenged persons. I was very concerned with the question asked by the member for Bell Garden East, Roxford, Delaford, and give the assurance that those concerns will be addressed in order for us to be on the same page or to level the playing field. Following the debate, the seniors received certificates of participation and tokens of appreciation for their contributions. This was the second senior citizens debate hosted by the aging unit of the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development. I'm Kern DeFreitas for Let's Talk to Bagel. When the villa was bought by its current owners, they were just interested in having a nice holiday home in Tobago. Now others have the opportunity to enjoy the peaceful ambience of this property. From Grafton, we take you to the northern village of Palatuver, where residents and the police came together to discuss security and other issues affecting their community. Our camera stopped in to bring you these highlights. Officer, is there a charge or a specific charge or, uh, um, for people, like they say, they're protesting and people would go and block the road? If you know how many offenses come out of those protests that you see on TV. The right to protest is a right enshrined in the Constitution. Freedom of expression, freedom of speech. But we tell people, even so, that right is not, not, not an unlimited right, you know. You must do so within the confines of the law. When you throw tires in the road and you burn that, that's an offense. The TTPS tongue meeting series rolled into the village of Palatuvea last week. There, residents raised their concerns and praised the police for being active in their communities. Patrols in the area, very regular, and also stops. All like five o'clock in the morning when I'm going to work. These guys, all in the village, you're not accustomed to that. She's doing an excellent work. I'm really I, glad to hear that. But my concern is the lights. If you in an area and you has the light on that means you telling me you're coming so my I, the the issue with the lights is why why you have to use the lights we was we will set out to catch someone who is doing something wrong there's something called proactive measures so we wouldn't want we would want to prevent them rather than try to catch them doing something wrong. So let them know the police are wrong so they would not do something. Residents also want to see the young people of the area positively engaged. They suggested that the community start a police youth club in partnership with the TTPS. So if you go to the meeting, and, and, and in the youth club there's a parent group, so we need the adults to come out as well. So that, I am sure, that idea, sir, we can take off with that. The town meeting series conducted by the police service is helping to bridge the gap between the public and the police across the country. I'm Marlon Gottsleben for Let's Talk to Bagel. Since purchasing the villa, the owners have maintained its original charm while adding a pool for the enjoyment of visitors. So if you're staying in, you can keep cool even on a hot day. Do you know your rights as a consumer? Well, in this next report, we'll tell you why it's important to know your rights. Have a look. As a consumer, it's important to know your rights. For World Consumer Day 2018, 
The Consumer Affairs Unit of the Division of Finance and the Economy is doing its part to increase public awareness on consumer rights in Tobago. This year's theme is Making Digital Marketplaces Fairer. The division hosted a forum recently to update the public on their rights as consumers, especially in a digital world. As our global village become a digitized community, the theme for the 2018 World Consumer Rights Day is aptly selected as Making Digital Marketplaces Fairer. And we in Tobago have chosen to focus on the automobile industry as it relates to the overarching 2018 theme. And so, we encourage consumers on the island to embrace your car in the digital age. The event is part of a thrust to ensure people are informed and play an active role in protecting their rights as consumers. There is no better time than the present to bolster our education drive on the island in order to raise consumer awareness and promote fair marketplaces. As a consumer, you have rights when purchasing goods and services. These include the right to safety, the right to be informed, the right to choose, and the right to be heard. World Consumer Rights Day is observed across the globe on March 15th. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. We've got to take a break, but coming up next, we'll tell you about a wide life farmer's display in Roxborough. Stay with us, Let's Talk Tobago returns soon. What's going on everybody, this is Neo and I'm coming to spend some time with you at the Tobago Jazz Experience 2018. Make sure that you at Pigeon Point Heritage Park Sunday, April 29th. Tobago Jazz, it's worth the experience. It's Neo, peace and love, I'll see y'all there. Ooh, it's something about, just something about the way she moves. I can't figure it out, it's something about her. Want it, want it, not get it. And get it, get it, no want it. Make sure you want it, Tara Riley live and the Black Side Band in Tobago, heading Spearside, the East, where the music will never cease. It's the Jazz Festival, it's Jazz in the East. And you know, the Jazz Festival is worth the wait and it's worth the experience. Free show for the people. Give me a little one. Everybody, if you just sing out to the top of them voice and have a good time. Sing it, sing it. You're a singer. Tobago, see you soon, April 28th. Oh gosh, man. When staying at Rainbow Villa, guests particularly enjoy the tranquility and isolation from the hustle and bustle of city life. And you can always rely on the professionalism and friendliness of the island investment staff. Now in Tobago, domesticated and farm animals can be found in almost every community. But the public recently ventured into the wild side to a display that gave them a close encounter with species usually found in uncontrolled surroundings. Omodara Mills brings us more. From reptiles like iguanas and the boar constrictor to various species of birds such as the mako, Children and adults in the East were excited for the opportunity to get close to a variety of wild animals that are read by members of the Wildlife Farmers Association of Tobago. The two-day wildlife exhibition was spearheaded by the association in collaboration with the Roxborough Police Youth Club and the Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries. Facilitator of the Police Youth Club, Collis Hazel, explains why his organization endorses the activity. We need to care our animals, our pets, and ensure that we treat them with love as we want to treat ourselves. I want to urge persons to get involved in the whole idea of preserving them and conserving them so that in time to come we would see more of them on the island. This is the Wildlife Farmers Association's first public exhibition for the year. One of the visitors to the exhibition, Adina Campbell, shares her thoughts on the event. They love it because some of them and know some of these animals at all. Imagine that, some of them don't know them. Notwithstanding, I afraid snake, eh? I ain't going near the snake cage. So, I'm going down that way, but it's nice. And I really admire the peacock. 
Vice President of the Wildlife Farmers Association, Antonio Philip, specializes in the rearing of snakes. He gives some tips on how to stay within the law when it comes to keeping wild animals. Make sure that you are certified so that in terms of the law, you are not going to be arrested or charged for having possession illegally. With the Wildlife Association, you're able to farm the animals, have them in possession outside of the hunting season. All right? You have your permits for having them certified and make sure that they, they give you a regular random check to make sure that you are maintaining the animals in good health and so on. It's hoped that this wildlife exhibition will become an annual event done at the grounds of the Roxborough Police Youth Club so that people can become more mindful of the importance of protecting and preserving our wild animals. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say. It's the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. We'll now take a look at who had their say this week. All right, so we're here with Miss Jordan right now. So we're here with Bruce right now. So we're here with Brent right now. And we're asking Mr. Philip. And we're asking Mr. Winchester. Like, that is for friends. I'm telling you that. Come on, come on, come on. Have your say segment brought to you can see B-Mobile. And today we're heading to uh, Chauvin Plaza. And we want to know how folks feel about Michelle Lee Aie bringing home the first goal ever for the 100-meter Commonwealth Games in the female category. Very proud. I think it was long in the making. And I'm glad that Michelle would have achieved this, not just for herself, but for Trinidad and Tobago. I feel very proud, you know. She, she did well. She did very well. It was awesome. I find it was a good job. I was looking forward to it. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely must. She must be proud of her country and you must be proud of her. I feel very nice because she actually come back and she won. Happy. Excited. Knowing that she's a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago and she is in a positive light to attract young people to believe in what they want to do. I want to say a thumbs up. To Michelle Ayi for making Trinidad and Tobago proud, you know, and let the younger generation who coming up behind her and who training with her to do their best. close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Tobago Jazz Experience 2017. Do enjoy. Good morning, bad mind. Yeah, how you doing? Make up my life where you walk, come rolling in on my face, me see you smiling in on your heart, me see you screwing. God alone knows what your mind is doing, eh? Them lift you up so when they see you stand tall, they bring you down so when them see them don't fall. And I've been watching you a long time now, boy. You're changing, yeah. So brand new. I'm not gonna say a thing, rude boy, cause I want you to know. This is not a dreadlock stand. Divine conception of the heart. Rip it, Hey, don't be afraid of Jehovah burning fire. Jehovah never burning fire. Trust in Jehovah fire and you never get burned. You stay on the rocks. Hot gal sitting down to see my locks. Said the DJ. The chilling on the yacht. We do care if you're drunk. Sip some of that. That's dung in a tinny da. What a Diego, what a Diego, what a Diego! Move in the conga, let me see you move like you gon' turn up. Hands in the air, everybody we say hands in the air. Everybody we say hands in the air. We say hands in the air.
Right hand in the middle center. 